talk about price path modeling, a key concept we use for projecting the future value of an options book. The core purpose of price path modeling is to help us determine how the price of a stock might change between milestone dates on its way to a target date being evaluated. The most important factor relied on to select probable future prices is the implied volatility of the underlying. Thanks to the implied volatility, we have accurate insight as to the relative magnitude the market anticipates the underlying to move over a given term. Since the implied volatility represents the standard deviation of the anticipated change, we can statistically calculate the likelihood of a given terminal price on that date relative to its peers. We can then use those relative probabilities to map out the implied distribution curve, which makes it easier to visually digest. Let's use an example scenario to illustrate this. Assume today is January 25th and we have a book that is long 100 shares and short two call contracts for February 19th. We also know that the at the money implied volatility for the underlying is around 40 for February 19th and at 34 for March 18th. To keep this scenario simple, we'll assume that the underlying does not issue a dividend and that the risk-free rate is 0%. In practice, we do factor those parameters in, but we'll keep them out here. Using this setup, we can map out the implied distribution for February 19th. Note that the highest relative probability is close to where the stock is currently trading, and bigger moves up or down become less likely as you move further away. Since the implied distribution is log normal, we know that the movement within a single standard deviation is over 68% likely, and a movement within two standard deviations is over 95%. The implied distribution plays an important role in developing a multitude of price paths that are statistically representative of the full range of outcomes. We dig into the importance of these factors in the price path strategy videos. Now suppose we wanted to model the potential outcomes of our book for February 19th. Since there are no option expirations prior to this date, we can directly chart the results as shown here. But what happens when we want to evaluate a range of terminal prices on a date that occurs after some of our options are set to expire? How do we select statistically feasible price paths? The solution here is to segment the duration of the term into smaller terms that lie between the milestone dates. The first term is between now and the first option expiration date, the next will be between the first and the second expirations, and so on until we reach the target date. Let's say we wanted to evaluate our example book for its likely return by March 5th. Since we have options that expire on February 19th, our first segment would be between now and then, and use the known implied volatility for that period. Once we reach that date, the platform employs an expiration handling strategy to determine how any in-the-money options are to be dealt with and adjust the book accordingly. We'll cover expiration handling in more depth in another video. Also, if the underlying is expected to distribute a dividend during this term, it would be deducted at this point. The next segment picks up the price selected for February 19th and determines a statistically reasonable price for it to move to on March 5th. However, in order to do this, we need an implied volatility for that term so that we can generate a proper distribution. Since there aren't any options expiring on March 5th in this scenario, we need to synthetically create a spot volatility for the term. Fortunately, we have volatilities that straddle March 5th, so we can use them to calculate what we need. When the prices are calculated purely as a function of the implied volatility and a standard deviation move, such as in the linear progression model, we can stop here. However, sometimes we need to be able to calculate a price move that's relative to the expected movement only within a given future term. In that scenario, we can extract a forward volatility, assuming we have spot volatilities for the start and end dates which we do here. With a forward volatility, we can then infer the price distribution for the end of that term relative to any starting price. The forward volatility completes our needs for the current sample. Now let's walk through the process of modeling another price path for evaluation. To keep things easier to understand, we'll work in terms of a single standard deviation move upward in each segment. In the first segment, a single standard deviation move upward at 40% volatility would produce a price point at 111.31. Since this would make the two short calls in our book in the money, the expiration handling strategy would be invoked to determine how they should be treated. In the next segment, a single standard deviation move would drive the stock up to 117.66, which is the terminal value for this price path. As a side note, 
These single standard deviation moves with different volatility should not be confused with a single standard deviation move using the March 5th term volatility. We cover that in more depth in the linear progression video. This whole process produced a single price path, but in practice it takes hundreds and sometimes thousands of potential price paths to gain real insight as to how an option book might perform over time. It's also common for a single price point to have been reached via multiple price paths, so the expiration handling strategy in play can play a significant role in determining the outcome. We offer two strategies for constructing price paths, Linear Progression and Monte Carlo. We cover each of those in their respective videos. As always, good luck and good hunting.